So some breaking news from the LLM arena. So if you're not aware, there's this place called Chatbot Arena, benchmarking LLMs in the wild that basically pits multiple different LLMs against each other and people from all the world test them with their favorite prompts to see which one performs better. You don't know which one's which, you just give it a prompt and you vote whether model A or model B performed better. And for the longest time, the top spot started with GPT-4, like GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-4 0314 from March of 2023, or 0613 from June of 2023. But today, the people behind Chatbot Arena posted this. Breaking news from Arena. Google Bard just made a stunning leap surpassing GPT-4 to the second spot on the leaderboard. Big congrats to Google for their remarkable achievement. The race is heating up like never before. Super excited to see what's next for Bard and Gemini Ultra release. And this is what that looks like. And I gotta say, it's really interesting seeing Google up there at the number two spot. Now, so far there's only 3,000 votes for this model, whereas the other ones that have been there for a longer period of time, you know, GPT-4 Turbo has 30,000 votes. So things might shift around quite a bit, but GPT-4 Turbo rating is 1249 and BARD comes in at a close second with 1215. But take this with a grain of salt. So this is very, very new. A lot of people in the comments are speculating about how you know, real this is. Like people are saying, this doesn't make sense, not unless they start giving you ultra via the API. And so this person is asking LM Systems Org, are you guys sure about the results? Is it possible that Google accidentally, you know, made you use ultra, Gemini ultra via the APIs while the rest of us get pro? It would be funny if that was the case. They clicked them into the higher end model just to game the results. Now, when we're looking at BARD, so this is bard.google.com slash updates. As you can see here, the last note on here, so the last update that this model has received was December 18th. So I just ran a quick experiment on the Chatboard Arena and the very first model that I got to test was this. Model A was BARD January 24th, Gemini Pro. And it got matched with GPT-40613. So, so OpenAI, their little notation for models is two-digit month, two-digit day. This is bar January 24, Gemini Pro. So I'm not sure if this is January 24th, like the date, or January 2024, like the year. But this is brand new, and it looks like it's been a stealth release because here on the sort of the updates page for Bard, for Google Bard, as you can see here, the last update was December 18th, 2023. And this one's obviously, you know, January 24th. Whether that's day or year, it's after, you know, December 18th, 2023. And looking at the responses it gives me, I gotta say, it's pretty good. I asked if all animals had human-like intelligence, which animal would dominate the corporate world? I like to ask questions that are unlikely to be in its training data, something that's a little bit outside of the box where it kind of has to fuse some information together to answer it. So it talked about how primates would do well at chimpanzees because of their complex social structures, which I think is smart. However, their propensity for violence and impulsiveness could lead to risky decisions. I mean, this is an excellent answer. The rest of them are very good as well. The second question I asked, what famous person from history would be best at playing Dota. Dota is kind of like a strategic video game, online battle arena, etc. So, you know, at the top, they said Sun Tzu, the Chinese military strategist known for the art of war, which I think is a great answer. But they also broke it down from different perspectives of, for example, brilliant innovators or leaders and motivators. So again, obviously more data is needed. I'm going to play around with this more, but I can see why this is up here. I can see why BARD is neck to neck with GPT-4, the various models here. And Google is having a big week this week. A number of interesting headlines hit the papers. For one, there's a leaked memo from Google CEO Sundar Pichai that talks about their AI ambitions. So here's Pichai's memo outlined the following key goals for Google in 2024. Number one is to deliver the world's most advanced, safe, and responsible AI. Improve knowledge, learning, creativity, and productivity. Build the most helpful personal computing platforms and devices. Enable organizations and developers to innovate on Google Cloud. Provide the world's most trusted products and platforms. Build a Google that's extraordinary for Googlers around the world and improve company velocity, efficiency, and productivity, and deliver durable cost savings. Now, a lot of that is corporate speak, so let's break that down just a little bit. So first things first, the deliver durable cost savings means, well, 
the big thing it means is layoffs. It means some people are going to lose their jobs. There was already a wave of layoffs this week. Here's a headline from Yahoo Finance. Google's Sundar Pichai wants to focus on durable cost savings in 2024 while his engineers ring alarm bells over lack of vision. And they're saying there's a dissonance between the goals and also the reality of the ongoing layoffs. There was this LinkedIn post that went viral. You might have seen it on Twitter or LinkedIn. Employee, twi employee at Google is saying that Google does not have one single visionary leader. They're saying some of Google's executives are competent referees. They point in a direction, watch all the employees swim in that direction, and sometimes things stick and it's cool. Right now, all the glassy-eyed leaders are pointing in a vague direction like AI, while at the same time killing their golden goose. And this is the big sort of question that's happening with Google right now. Their golden goose was search. It was one of the best business models possibly on planet Earth. People clicked on little blue links and paid Google tons of money for advertising. It was incredible. AI seems to be disrupting search. It seems to be the potentially the replacement for search. And it seems like it's going to be pretty available. There's no moat. And so it looks like what this person is saying is like, while these Google executives point in various directions, hoping something good will happen, there are these rolling layoffs in the last six, 12 months that's affecting morale of the company. There's a pervasive sense of nihilism that has taken hold. The buildings are half empty at 4.30, which that was not Google's culture. Google, the Mountain View, Googleplex at least, was this thing that was busing till late at night, late in the evening. You'd walk into any building on campus and there's somebody swimming in the ball pit. And they're saying Google was a really magical place not that long ago. Now, I don't know how much of this is true or not and what the different like perspectives and biases are, but it does seem like Google used to be this legendary place. Somebody went on a whole rant about how amazing Google's data centers were, how perfectly crafted the wiring and the computer banks and just the arrangement of everything because they hired the best, the smartest, and they put them to work. I'm not sure what changed, but you do hear this idea of employees becoming cynical. What's interesting is Google still has Google DeepMind, some of the most exciting, incredible research on robotics and various other biotech technology as it relates to AI is coming out of Google DeepMind. However, those two companies are pretty much separate. If I understand correctly, DeepMind isn't even in Mountain View, it's in London. It's a separate staff, separate culture, separate focus. And Demi Sasabis is careful not to let DeepMind intermingle too much with Google proper. And this article finishes with Google's leaked goals for 2024 and juxtaposed with the ongoing layoffs and employee cynicism, paid a picture of a company at a critical juncture. The prevalent sense of burnout and disillusionment highlights the urgent need for organizations to prioritize employee well-being, foster a positive work culture, and consider the long-term implications of their decisions on both individuals and society. Maybe. Or maybe they need to go back to their roots. Maybe they need to go back to their near mythical legendary founding. Another recent announcement is that Google's AI model Gemini can help business create better ads. They're merging Google ads with Gemini, or at least they're adding the Gemini functionality into Google ads. So Google still accounts for 90% of search traffic in the US. It's still the dominant search engine. And they're trying to start to help businesses automatically generate ads with AI. So the interesting thing here is that Google's metrics and their ability to optimize campaigns using AI, now with the generative AI side of it, the ability for the Gemini chatbot to basically write AI, to basically write ads and then have it automatically test it, improve it, see which ads are appealing to different demographics of people, for example, could be massive, especially if it's helping small businesses that don't want to sit there creating ads to help them basically take power, take charge of their ad campaigns. Right now, that's all that money is going to agencies, ad agencies that basically help them get set up on Google search and Google ads. Replacing that with AI assistant can be quite a big deal. In other interesting news, Hugging Face and Google partner for OpenAI collaboration. This is OpenAI, not OpenAI. I know that's confusing. Here, they don't mean the company, they mean just the idea of open sourced AI. So really quick about Hugging Face. So if you recall, this was the AI Insight Forum where a bunch of politicians and players got together. That's Alex Karp right there from Palantir. I believe that's Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. I believe that's Satya from Microsoft. I believe that's Jensen Huang from NVIDIA, Elon and Zuckerberg. On the other side of the table, there was Sundar Pichai from Google. And this guy right here, that's the CEO and founder of Hugging Face. 
His name is Clam DeLang. And they're saying at Hugging Face, we want to enable all companies to build their own AI, leveraging open models and open source technologies. The reason I point this out is because they're an important player. They're probably not as well known as, you know, Google and OpenAI and Meta and NVIDIA and all these other companies. But Hugging Face, and that name is so weird, but Hugging Face is, I mean, their logo is just like this Hugging Face. But the point is they're building the open source AI infrastructure. And they're saying that from the original transformer to the vision transformer, Google was the one that published some of the contributions to the research for the AI community. And now they have a strategic partnership that will help amplify efforts led by Google and Hugging Face to make everything more accessible to the AI research community. So today, hundreds of thousands of Hugging Face users are active on Google Cloud, downloading models to create Gen AI applications. And this strategic partnership between Google and Hugging Face will allow Google Cloud customers to easily train and deploy Hugging Face models and access to all the various hardware that's available through there. Google recently, just this week, has also been focused on rolling out AI-powered features for education, classroom management, accessibility, and also adding AI features to Google Chrome, including a writing helper, theme creator, and tab organizer. If you have that available, you can click on the top left, click on Organize Tabs, and have it kind of automatically suggest various groups for you. And of course, the bigger news is Google text to video Lumiere that they dropped recently that we've covered in a different video, but I got to say the consistency across these images, the temporal consistency, as they call it, is very, very good. Seemingly better than the other ones on the market. They do have a study that we've covered where they have users compare the various ones and Google Lumiere does come out on top. And I do believe those results just looking at these images. Again, at the end of the day, we do have to get our hands on them and test them and see for ourselves. But if these images are true to what we will be getting when this thing launches, I think that is indeed very, very exciting. But of course, the really, really big thing that everybody's waiting for and that we're all sort of holding our breath for is the full release of Gemini, the Gemini Ultra, their big model in all its glory and all its capabilities and the ability to use it with API or through BARD or however it's going to be used. I think a lot of people are very interested to find out where that's going to be landing in terms of its abilities to surpass GPT-4. Google said it's coming in the beginning of 2024, so it could be just around the corner. And if this bar Gemini Pro is indeed a good apples to apples comparison with GPT-4 Turbo, and it is indeed almost as good, slightly behind, then certainly this would be a good sign for Google. Time will tell. The competition is heating up, but I'm curious what you think. What do you think about Google? Is Google struggling or is it just biding its time. Will Google be the dominant AI player or do you think it's lost a little bit of steam along the way? Or do you think it should not prioritize AI at all and just focus on huge sums of money from its search engine? There are some shorter term investors that would prefer that to huge capital expenditures into the future of AI. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.